Hello everybody, this is part 3 on how to make an RPG or adventure game in Scratch. If you haven't seen part 1 or 2 already, then make sure to check it out in the link in the description below. Anyways, this is our game so far. There's multiple levels, I just added some trees on that one and a rock on this one. And also, if the character goes in front of the apple tree here and you press space, then it just says apple found. So in this video, let's keep an inventory of what the player has and make the player be able to go into the house. Let's also make the character be able to collect stone from the rock here. Anyways, let's start with the inventory. So right now, the game doesn't keep track of how many apples the character has. So let's make a variable that stores how many apples the player has. So let's go to data, create a new variable, let's name it apples. And click OK. I'll just move it up a bit. And now go to your trunk. That's where the player interacts with it. And drag a change apples by one into the if statement. So when the player presses space while touching the trunk, then it says apple found. And it also changes apples by one. So as you see here, there's four apples and five apples. And yeah, so it's working. Let's also make another variable and name it stone and that's going to keep track of how much stone we have we're not going to use it right now but I'll do something with it later and also if you guys don't want the plain old variable I have a tutorial on how to make a number counter that can hold an infinitely large number and only has two sprites that's also going to be in the description below anyways let's make our character go into the house so in order to do that we're going to have to make it so that when the character is standing in front of the door and we press space, then it goes into the room. That's a lot similar to the tree trunk as the player has to stand in front of it and we have to press space. So I'm going to create a clone of this and switch it to the door costume so we don't have to create a new sprite for the door. I'll also uh, make the trunk a clone so that it's less confusing. So to do that, let's go to control and drag a create clone of myself. Let's put it into the when flag clicked. Let's drag one more since we're having two clones, the trunk and the door. And since the two clones have different actions for when we press space as this door makes the player go into the room and the trunk gives the player an apple, we're going to have to create a new variable. So let's go to data, make a new variable, and let's name this uh, clone number. Also make sure to check for this sprite only and click OK. And I'm going to hide this. So now drag a set clone number under the create clone of myself and let's set this to one and drag one more and set this to two. Oh yeah, actually set the variable before creating the clone of myself and do the same for this one so that it's like this. So what selecting this option does is that it makes this variable a private variable so that if you have clones then each clone can have a different variable and hold a different value so for this the sprite itself sets the clone number variable to one and then it creates the clone of myself and the clone inherits all of the variables from the main sprite itself so this clone right here has clone number set to one and now the main sprite sets the clone number to two and creates a clone of myself again However, when the main sprite changes the variable, it doesn't affect the variable here. So the clone number for the clone right here is still 1, while the clone number for this clone is 2. Now let's use this to our advantage. So take this part out from the when flag clicked and drag the show to here so that we can take this out. And go to control and take out a when I start as a clone and put this right here. Now let's grab an if statement and go to operators, grab an equal, and grab a clone number. So if clone number is equal to one, then put it in the forever loop and it runs all of this inside. Let's also drag these two inside of this one, like this. So now we just made this trunk a clone instead of the original sprite right here. Now let's make the door clone number two. So we can just copy this duplicate this and put it right here and change the if clone number is equal to 2 
so change the 1 to a 2. So remember, this clone here is for the door. So also, I'm just going to approximately reposition it to like right here. So x, negative 20, and y, 2. So if we run this, it's not going to really work because I didn't add in the door costume to this sprite right here. So since the door is in the same level with the trunk, let's just add it in the same costume as the trunk. So I'll just drag it here and move it so that it matches it perfectly with the door right there. And I'll also take out the house so that it only leaves the door like this. Okay. So if we do this, then it's not going to work because it creates two clones of itself, but it has two different positions. So this doesn't work. And instead of that, let's go to costumes and delete these two and duplicate this costume and only have one object in each costume. So I'll delete the door in this one and I'll delete the trunk in this one. I'll also move this here in the middle right here. So yeah, now I'll go to looks and then grab a switch costume to so that when the clone number is one, which is the tree trunk, then it switches costume to the tree trunk, which would be zero zero. And I'll just name it to one so that it sounds like, you know, one and two. And now grab a switch costume to again. And then if clone number equals two, which is the door, then it switches costume to the door, which would be two. And also take this script out for now. We don't want it. And if we click the green flag, then the two clones show, as you can see right here. This is the door right here, and this is the trunk. Now I'll just uh, reposition the trunk, I mean the door, because it's not in line with the house, so I'll just move the X position by negative one. I'll change the Y by two, so that it's four. And now it's blended in with the house. Now that you have the door, you can delete the door in the house costume, so I'm just gonna do that, so that I don't get confused. So I'll just go to bitmap and take the door out. So yeah, it's also a bit blurry, so I'll just fix that like this. And I'll reposition it again a bit to, to the left and up a bit more. Now we have the two objects, but if we switch levels, then the objects still show as you see here. Okay, yeah, I'll just hide this right now. Make sure to hide the real sprite, but also make sure the clones show. So add a show at the beginning of when I start as a clone, and also make sure to add a hide at the beginning of when flag clicked. So now, yeah, if we go to a next level, then the clones still show. So that's definitely a problem, and we don't want that. So to fix that, let's go to control and grab a if else statement and go to operators and grab an equals and let's grab the join east west north south from the block we just took out earlier and put that here and now for the other side of the equals equation add whatever level you want the clones to show so in this case if you show east west and north south right here that would be zero zero so i will type two zeros and i'll hide these and Drag the things in your if statement into this one right here and drag it back and also put the show inside of here and then go to looks and grab a hide. So what this does is that for the trunk, which is clone number one, if the current level is zero zero, which it is, then it runs the code in here, else it just hides for every other level. So if we try this, the trunk should show and wait, I'll just add a show in here. So if we try this, then the trunk would hide if we switch to another level, and the door would show. So if we go here, then the trunk is gone, but the door is still here. So since this thing works, I'll just duplicate this and only take the if-else statement, and I'll put this code inside of the if and drag it back. And now both of these hide when switched to a new level, and they show again when it's back. And since we don't need this forever loop, we can just take this out along with the switch costume too. 
And now let's make it so that the player can enter the house. So go to clone number two, which is the door. So right here. And let's take out the two scripts inside of here because that's for the trunk. And now if it's touching sprite one, which is the player, and the space bar is pressed, then let's make it switch levels. So go to data and then grab the set variable two and then change it to north south and grab another one and change it to east west. I'll just name the east west one to room and the north south one to a blank. We don't want to set these to numbers because the numbers are for the normal levels. And inside the house is like a special level. So now drag the wait until space pressed back inside the if statement. So now what this does is that if the door is touching the player and the space key is pressed, then the level switches to east-west room and north-south nothing. So we want all of the background to change. So let's change the background costumes to have a costume for the room. So I'll create a new costume and I'll name it room. Since the costume name is based on the name in the east-west variable plus the north-south, and since east-west is room and north-south is nothing, it would be room plus nothing, which is room. So in this costume, I'll just add some black walls like this. And one more here. I'll make this a bit bigger. And I'll also add two like this. So, yeah. And for the stage, I also wanted to change to the floor of the room. So I'll go to backdrops, create a new one, and also name it room. And I'll just make this like an orange color for the floor. And go back to scripts. And let's make it change to that costume when the character enters the house. So go to events, grab a one flag clicked, grab a for for loop, and grab an if else statement. And go to operators, grab an equals, and grab a join. Go to data, grab east, west, and north, south. So if join east, west, and north, south, which is the level, is equal to room, then go to looks, then it switches backdrop to room. Else, it switches backdrop to backdrop one, which would be the grass. Now I'll just hide these variables, and let's test it. So when the player goes in, then, oh yeah, I forgot to do the same thing for the sprite right here. So go to costumes, and since this sprite would be hidden, I'll just name it room and leave the costume empty. So now if we try this, the character goes into the door, and I press space, and it switches inside of the room. Also, the player can't exit for right now. Now we'll need a door so that the player can go out of the house. So let's create a new clone since this would be a new object. So let's set clone number to three and create a clone of myself again. So now I'll just duplicate this code right here and attach this at the end and change clone number to three. Now since the door was right around here, we'll need the top view of the door. So I'll just create a new costume and create the top view. I'll actually just duplicate this and delete this right here. And now we have the top view of the door. So go back to your clone number three and change this to room because if the level is equal to the room, then it runs the code in here. So let's first show this and move it to where we want. I'll say right here, which is x negative 6 and y negative 101. And switch costume to 3. And now, if it's touching the player and space pressed is 1, then it sets north south back to 0 and east west back to 0. So if we run it again, then we press space, the character goes in, and it's touching the door, and we press space again, and okay. It's not really working because the player isn't actually touching the door yet. It's just like stopping right when it goes in front of it. So let's see. Let me check the hitbox. Okay, so here's sort of a quick fix solution. 
So go to sensing and grab this block right here. Let me check. Okay, actually grab this block right here, distance two, and change this to sprite one, which would be the character, and grab an operator, grab an less than operator, drag this into here, and I'll just play around with the numbers, so I'll just write 25 at first. So yeah, let's drag it in, and I'll actually say less than, I'd say 10, and now you don't need the touching sprite one, so just take it out. Oh yeah, and one thing, add a wait until space pressed equals zero at the beginning of the if statement also. So add it right in here, and do that for clone number equals two also, which would be the door going into the house. So now if we test this, then the player goes to the house, and the player should go out. Okay, I should change the distance to maybe 12, I think. 12 might work. Yeah, okay. the player can now go in and out of the house. So, yeah. Now there's still one more problem, however. When the player goes into the house, the player should start right here in the door frame. And when the player goes out of the house, then the player should be right in front of the door. So let's change that. Let's go to events and then go grab a broadcast and then create a new message. I'll just call it house in and click OK. So, so yeah, let's drag it in. And I'll actually say less than, I'd say 10. And now you and now you don't. And then drag when I receive house in. And let's see where the player should be in. Right around here. So the player appears right here. That would be x, negative 6, and y, negative 84. Let's just move it a bit right here. So that would be, let's see. That would be y, negative 95. So y equals negative 95. And yeah. And now when the player goes out of the house, it should appear right in front of the door. So right here, that would be x, negative 21, y, negative 3. So go to your door object sprite and create a new event by creating a new broadcast. So I'll just say it house out, click OK, and then put it in the if statement of clone number equals 3. And now go to your hitbox. And let me see, what was the coordinates again? I'll just drag it right here. So x, negative 21, and y, negative 3. So go to events. When I receive house out, then go to x, negative 23, and y, negative 3. So now this should work like this. And the player is stuck. So I'll just change the y by 1. So it would be y equals negative 94. Let's see if that works. Let's run it again. And... Yep, it works. So yeah, now the player can go in and out of the house successfully. So yeah, I wanted to do some interactions with the stone in this video, but I guess we'll do it next video along with some more things. But anyways, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel as I post weekly uploads. So that's it for this tutorial. See ya.